Okay, hi everybody. Go for it. Okay, this is not Mordor. This is Montana last summer. Uh, Montana is already a semi-arid place, and it's getting warmer and drier. And as a result of that, we're getting more fire and bigger fire when it happens. But Montana is not the only place that this is happening. The whole West is getting warmer and drier. This is a snapshot of one day last August of all the fires going around the country, and they were everywhere. You'll recall also, for example, that at another time during the summer, Colorado had absolutely apocalyptic fire conditions. So the reason for all this is that carbon dioxide is building up in the atmosphere. It's trapping heat, raising temperatures, and consequently, the way that water cycles through the atmosphere is changing. If I were giving this talk in New York, we'd be talking about floods and storms, but here, we gotta deal with drought and its problems. Okay, temperature down here. This green is the distribution of temperatures from 1950 to 1980 around the world. This is the distribution now. Back then, at any given time, 0.1% of the Earth was covered with extreme weather. Now it's 10%, a hundred times larger. And this curve is accelerating to the left. Of the 10 hottest years on record in recorded human history, nine of them have happened since the year 2000. And I should emphasize that this is not the new normal. This is not a steady state. We have merely taken a few steps down a long and difficult path. Another way to look at this is to look at the ratio of high temperature records to low temperature records. When the climate is stable, that ratio is one to one. When everything is warming up, that ratio increases, as it has here in the US over the course of the last several decades, but uh, also around the world. This is what our drought looked like this last summer. The redder, the hotter, or the drier, I should say. Now, Montana had a lot of drought. We had abnormally dry conditions, moderate drought, severe drought. Um, but Montana didn't get the worst of it. The worst of it was reserved here for the Midwest. So, for example, a plant biologist in southern Illinois was quoted as saying that farming there was like farming in hell. And this was not an uncommon thing for uh, people involved in agriculture to say last summer. Uh, and, in fact, uh, U.S. Agricultural, out, uh, agricultural output dropped considerably. This is happening around the world, and as a result of that, food prices are rising. Over the last several years, we've had two food price spikes that set all-time records. And uh, commodities futures this year suggest that we're going to have a food price spike higher than any that have come before this year in 2013. This is what drought around the world has looked like for the last two years. If we lived in normal times, this picture would be a lot less red. This is exactly what climate scientists have been telling us would happen for a long time. In fact, they now say that they were too conservative about the impacts. This is what they predict our drought situation in the world will look like at the end of this century. Critical for us is this here. This is the driest possible kind of drought. It's permanent Death Valley conditions, and we'll be right at the edge of it. If that happens, Montana as we know it will be gone. We're going to lose a lot of stuff, and the economy that rests on that stuff is going to struggle mightily. I emphasize here that this is not the worst case scenario. This is our middle of the road best guess about what's going to happen. I, can't, I don't have time to talk about the worst case scenario, but it's a difficult thing to contemplate. Okay. Every National Academy of Science in the world that has a National Academy of Science in every country that has that, says that we need to act on climate change now. For example, the G8 plus five nations academies say the need for urgent action to address climate change is now indisputable. Okay, so we're in a pickle. Uh, there is some reason for hope. One is the solar industry, which is expanding far faster than anybody expected. Right now, the solar industry, solar is being deployed at a rate about 17 times that which was predicted a decade ago, and it's going up in all kinds of places that you would never have expected. For example, the Pope has solar panels. So I've heard the Pope is a pretty conservative guy. I hear that he's Catholic, which means that he values tradition more than breathing. Nonetheless, 
he has consented to have uh, the Vatican covered in solar panels. And it's not just him. So this is a picture of the total megawatts of solar power produced year by year in the world. And you can see since 2005, it has absolutely exploded. Now, it's still a small fraction of the total world's energy production, but it's going in the right direction, and it's accelerating like gangbusters. One of the reasons for this is that it turns out that the more solar we use, the cheaper it gets per watt. It's exactly the opposite of fossil fuels. So for this reason, solar is going to win. But because of climate change, it's got to win soon. And it might not win soon enough unless something else happens. So what is missing? I think we're missing. A majority of Americans now believes that climate change is a problem. But most of us who believe that we look the other way. We don't want to get personally involved. It's somebody else's problem. I think this is self-defeating, and I also think it's a kind of unexciting and scary way to live, to try to just pretend it's not there. So two things that you can do. One is speak up. Cultural change happens when we first change the way we talk to one another, when we challenge each other and don't let each other uh, express complacency. We don't let each other look the other way. We encourage each other to focus on the problem. The second thing to do is simply to get involved. The city of Bozeman has a climate action plan that you can read about at bozemanclimatepartners.net. You can click on be a partner to find out ways to get involved. If you do that, if you get involved, send me an email. I'll come to your house. I'll French kiss you <laughs> for as long as you want. Thanks. <laughs>